ever witness to someone? I mean, really witness to them, asking them to put their faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. As a member of Fifth Street Baptist Church, that's what we're supposed to do because that's part of our mission statement to evangelize the lost, equip the saved, and serve the community. Now, the first part is what we're talking about, evangelizing the lost, to be evangelists, going out and telling them about Jesus Christ. And it's what's in the Bible when Jesus says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he says, I'll be with you. And it's really, really easy in theory. But that's where we come in with some of the things we do here. It's discipleship. We have to learn how to do it. It's where we can get to that point where we're comfortable with sharing our faith with others. Fortunately, we have a couple of things that help us once we have our discipleship team, which is what Sunday school falls under when the classes to learn. But we have a lot of tools at our disposal to use. We have Who's Your One? Who's Your One? Uh, you can go to Who's Your One.com and it talks about sharing with others and making it intentional to share your faith with others. And if, you're, if it's really hard for you, there's three circles. You can go uh, to three circles. There, there's even an app that you can share the gospel with that person and just continually go on, um, have them just flip through it. And then sharing the gospel and how Jesus came to save us. But it's still really hard. But how about if you know that it's going to cost your life? We are really trying right now in a safe space, going out and telling others, times are changing right now, times are getting harder, and it's, it's imperative that we go out and we speak to the world, and that we tell this world about someone who died for our sins, and we share with them. Because right now, we're not dying for it. But in this lesson, we're going to learn that it's still worth it. Let's talk about it. Good morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come right now thanking you for your word. We thank you for this word right now, God. We ask that you would just help us to understand it. Let it touch our hearts and touch our minds that we'll be able to share this word with others. We ask dear Lord Jesus that you would just continue to bless us, that others will see that we are blessed, that we will be able to share those blessings that with the others, that we'll be able to share the love of Christ with others, that we'll be able to share the love with one another so others will see that we are your disciples for you said in your word that they will see that they will know that we're your disciples because of our love we just thank you god for yet another day we thank you for yet another time to be able to get into your word we ask that you would just help us to understand it to learn it and to share it in your name we pray amen this lesson starts off talking about stephen he was one of the original deacons. When the apostles said that they can't take themselves away from going to the Lord to bring the word to the people, they said, pick, pick seven men. And Stephen was one of them. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and the Cyrenians, the Alexandrians, and 
of those from Sicilia and Asia rose up and disputed with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and spirit with which he was speaking. So the deacons, these seven men, were those who took care of the people. And Stephen was one of them. And he set forth and he came forth with power and he spoke with wisdom. And there were a couple of people, well, a lot of people came up against him and they didn't like it. They didn't like him and they kept going up against him, but they could not come up against the spirit that was in him, the Holy Spirit that came up as he spoke and he spoke with wisdom and with power. Just like the last week when Ananias and Sapphira, when they lied, they weren't lying to Peter. They weren't lying to man. They were going up against the Holy Spirit. And just like then, just like them, these people were coming up against, against, against Stephen, but they were not able to overtake him because of the Holy Spirit. So they started getting other people to lie on him. They said had they literally went and got other people to lie and say that Stephen was blaspheming against the Holy Spirit, uh, blaspheming and saying things that weren't true. But the thing is, Stephen was in the word. Stephen studied the word, and that is what was that kept him forward. That was how he was able to speak the word because he studied. He didn't just go off on what he thought. He was constantly studying in the word. And when we want to go out and share the word with others, we have to know what we're talking about. Talked about it earlier that when we're talking about discipleship and evangelism, those two go hand in hand. You can't evangelize without knowing what you're talking about. Our forefathers had the tabernacle of testimony with them in the desert. It had been made as God directed Moses according to the pattern he had seen. Having received the tabernacle, our fathers under Joshua brought it with them when they took the land from the nations God drove out before them. It remained on in the land until the time of David, who enjoyed God's favor and asked that he might provide a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built the house for him. However, the Most High does not live in the houses made by men, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. 87% of American homes have at least one Bible. At least one. Not including the Bible app or anything. One physical Bible in their home. However, only 37% of those families, of those homes, those households state that they read the Bible at least once a week. And the main reason why they said they can't is because of no time. They don't have enough time. I was once told you always have time for what you put first. So if you do it the first thing in the morning and then you go on with your day, a lot of people exercise first thing in the morning because they can get it out of the way and then go on with their day. You always have time for it. The real reason a lot of people don't read the Bible is because they don't understand. And this is what Stephen was telling the Jews. He said, all these things are going on. You are reading the scriptures, but you don't understand. You don't understand what you're reading. And the reason why you don't understand what you're reading is because you are rejecting the Holy Spirit. 
Now, they got really upset about that because when you say you rejected the Holy Spirit, that means no repentance. You are not allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life. And so all these things that they were talking about, about the ancestors, about Joseph and all these things, they didn't understand what God was trying to tell them because they weren't really actively listening because they didn't have the Holy Spirit within them to show them what the word is saying. So how would you explain to a new believer that Bible reading is so important? How would you tell them that it's important, it's imperative that they read the word? Not even just a new believer, but someone who isn't reading the word. How can you tell them that that's the most important thing, that word getting into them? What are the most common obstacles that keep you from consistent Bible reading? What stops you? There was a story where the devil brought a bunch of his guys around and said, how do I keep the Christians from studying? How do I keep them from worshiping? And one of them came up and said, we can tell them there's no God. And he's like, they already know in the word that even the demons believe in God. So that's not it. And another one comes up and goes, we can tell him there's no devil. He's like, look at all the evidence of the different places where people aren't believing in God. They know that there's a devil. So much evil is in the world right now. So can't do that one. And one came up with a great idea. He says, we can tell him that there is no need to hurry. When they heard these things, they were enraged and gnashed their teeth at him. Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven. He saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right, of the, at the right hand of God. He said, Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. They yelled at the top of their voices, covered their ears, and together rushed against him. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And after saying this, he fell asleep. So at this part, we see that the Jews basically reverted to preschoolers. When they didn't like what Stephen was telling them, they got angry. They were just growling, yelling at him. And they came at him and they grabbed him. And then he looked up into heaven and saw Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he said it. Look, I see the heavens opening up and the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Father. And they lost it. I looked in several different Bible translations to see if it was just this one, but they literally went la, 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 yelling at the top of their voice, covering their ears. Read it. It's verse 57. They did not want to hear it. So they came and they got him and they took him out of town, out to the edge of town, tied him up and stoned him to death because he was telling them that they were wrong and they didn't want to accept the Holy Spirit. And they felt that what they were doing, the way they were projecting themselves, presenting themselves, was the right thing. And it shows that they, as they were killing him and they laid their clothes at the feet of a young man by the name of Saul, they killed him and he said, Lord Jesus, don't 
attach this sin to them. He's, don't blame them for this. Just as Jesus told the Father, forgive them for what they do. Stephen, at the time of his death, prayed for those who were persecuting him, prayed for those who were literally murdering him because of the Holy Spirit in him showing love for them. We have to go through, forth and share the Holy Spirit with others, share the gospel with others. And we have to have that boldness, knowing that we're probably, most likely, not going to be grabbed up and taken out of town and hit with rocks and stone to death. We may be called names. We may have someone no longer want to be friends with us. But what's more important, that person to like you or that person to get into heaven? We have to understand this is not a game. We have to be serious about the Father's business. So, what's the point? The Spirit empowers God's people to boldly proclaim the gospel, even in the face of death. How will you commit to blessing those who curse you and praying for those who persecute you? How can the sufferings of Jesus help us to understand persecution? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to look into your word and see what you have for us. We ask God that you would just help us to understand that it's not about us and it's all about you. And we, even though people come up against us, that we must come and be about Jesus first, Jesus always, and Jesus only. We, Lord, we ask that you would just help us to pray for those who persecute us, pray for those who are coming up against us as we go forth with your word. We ask that you would just help us to understand that we need to continue going forward with the word no matter what. We thank you and we praise you. In your name we pray, amen.